I'm grateful to Vanessa and the Bryan family for the opportunity to speak today. I'm grateful to be here to honor Gigi and celebrate the gift that Kobe gave us all. What he accomplished as a basketball player, as a businessman and a storyteller, and as a father. In the game of basketball, in life, as a parent, Kobe left nothing in the tank. He left it all on the floor. Maybe it surprised people that Kobe and I were very close friends. But we were very close friends. Kobe was my dear friend. He was like a little brother. Everyone always wanted to talk about the comparisons between he and I. I just wanted to talk about Kobe. You know, all of us have brothers and sisters, little brothers, little sisters who, for whatever reason, always tend to get in your stuff, <laughs> your closet, your shoes, everything. It was a nuisance, if I can say that word. But that nuisance turned into love over a period of time, just because the admiration that they had for you as big brothers or big sisters. The questions, the wanting to know every little detail about life that they were about to embark on. He used to call me, text me, 11.30, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> talking about post-up moves, footwork, and sometimes the triangle. <laughs> At first, it was an aggravation. <laughs> but it, then it turned into a certain passion. This kid had passion like you would never know. And it's, a, it's an amazing thing about passion. If you love something, if you have a strong passion for something, you would go to the extreme to try to understand or try to get it. Either ice cream, Cokes, hamburgers, whatever you have a love for. If you have to walk, you would go get it. If you have to beg someone, you would go get it. What Kobe Bryant was to me was the inspiration that someone truly cared about the way I either I played the game or the way that he wanted to play the game. He wanted to be the best basketball player that he could be. And as I got to know him, I wanted to be the best big brother that I could be. To do that, you had to put up with the aggravation, the late night calls, or the dumb questions. I took great pride as I got to know Kobe Bryant, that he was just trying to be a better person, a better basketball player. We talked about business. We talked about family. We talked about everything. And he was just trying to be a better person. I remember maybe a couple of months ago, he sends me a text. And he's saying, I'm trying to teach my daughter some moves. And I don't know what I was thinking or what I was working on, but what, would you, what were you thinking about? when you were trying to, as you were growing up, trying to work on your moods. 
I say, what age? He says, 12. I said, at 12, I was trying to play baseball. He sends me a text back saying, laughing my ass off. And this was at 2 o'clock in the morning. But the thing about him was we could talk about anything that related to basketball, but we can talk about anything that related to life. And we, as we grow up in life, rarely have friends that we can have conversations like that. Well, it's even rare when you can grow up against adversaries and have conversations like that. I went and saw Phil Jackson in 1999 or maybe 2000. I don't know when Phil was here in L.A. And I walk in and Kobe's sitting there. And the first thing, I'm in a suit. The first thing Kobe said, did you bring your shoes? <laughs> no, I wasn't thinking about playing. <laughs> but his attitude to compete and play against someone he felt like he could enhance and improve his game with. To me, that's what I loved about the kid. Absolutely loved about it, the kid. No matter where he saw me, it was a challenge. And I admired him because his passion, you rarely see someone who's looking and trying to improve each and every day, and not just in sports, but as a parent, as a husband. I am inspired by what he's done and what he shared with Vanessa and what he's shared with his kids. I have a daughter who is 30 who just um, became a grandparent. And I have two twins. I have the twins at six. And to hug them and to see the love that they, and the smiles that they bring to us as parents. He taught me that just by looking at this tonight, looking at how he responded and reacted with the people that he actually loved. These are the things that we will continue to learn from Kobe Bryant. To Vanessa, Natalia, Bianca, Capri, my wife and I will keep you close in our hearts and our prayers. We will always be here for you, always. I also want to offer our condolences and support to all the families affected by this enormous tragedy. Kobe gave every last ounce of himself to whatever he was doing. After basketball, he showed a creative side to himself that I didn't think any of us knew he had. In retirement, he seemed so happy. He found new passions, and he continued to give back as a coach in his community. More importantly, he was an amazing dad, amazing husband who dedicated himself to his family and who loved his daughters with all his heart. Kobe never left anything on the court. And I think that's what he would want for us to do. No one knows how much time we have. That's why we must live in the moment. We must enjoy the moment. We must reach and see and spend as much time as we can with our families and friends and the people that we absolutely love. To live in the moment means to enjoy each and every one that we come in contact with. When Kobe Bryant died, a piece of me died. And as I look in this arena and across the globe, a piece of you died or else you wouldn't be here. Those are the memories that we have to live with and we learn from. I promise you, from this day forward, I will live with the memories of knowing that little brother that I tried to help in every way I could. Please, rest in peace, little brother.